Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our UFT. Today we are looking at the next topic that's like how to launch an application using UFT. So generally when we have been talking about so other pre you know, previous tutorials about recording and replay and to a certain extent we also launched the application manually. But uh, when it comes to launching the application automatically, we try to understand that what is the scripting which is used or the command which is utilized to, to uh, consider while launching certain applications. So today agenda will be to deal with the same thing that what exactly are the different ways to do the same. And before we can really continue with that, let me just uh, show you a quick thing about how exactly those scripts can be utilized and so on. So obviously there are two different ways where you can have a look here. So there's one way which we call it as invoke application by which you can launch the application. And there's another way which is called as system util. Um, that's system util dot run. So these are the two different ways by which you can really uh, launch an application using these two commands where there's a slight difference between invoke application and systemutil.run. So that we'll see once we have launched successfully applications using these commands. So let's try with the first one. And uh, as I told you earlier, it is uh, VB script is not case sensitive, so you can really rely on that. So if you put it as small caps, it all is the same. So for generally, when you talk about invoke application, the syntax says uh, invoke application command, which is the optional thing, and start in path. The path required to launch the application, of course, that would be the path of the application which you would like to launch. And generally used in the cases when it is a desktop application or any such application which has a property or a target path associated with it. So let's quickly capture one of the paths for this application, which is our dummy application, and move to the properties here. And generally the properties would contain the uh, target path, so it has to be including the uh, the applications dot exe in the target and you just close it and paste it here so now if you see it has included the uh, the command here and followed by the method to you know launch the application so our, all we have to do is after writing this is click on the run button just to launch keep the other one commented because uh, we don't want to have a runtime error so click on run just to make sure that the command really works all right, so you see the application has launched and it has given me a successful outcome as well. So let's quickly look at the other one. Let's close this. And the other one is also the command for the same thing, which we are using is uh, systemutil.run. And for that, I would comment the first one, the previous one in work application, and then put it as systemutil.run with the double quotes. Remember team, whenever you're working with the scripting language, the uh, Values must be always within the double quotes. So let's move to the next one and click on run, making sure that the application is not open and click on run here. All right, so you see there is an application which is launched. So that's a successful outcome again, and this time you get a pass status. So there is a slight difference between these two commands and methods uh, which we use in UFT to launch the applications. Or of course, when you talk about invoke application, has the same syntax, systemutil.run has the same syntax. But when you slightly look into the difference of uh, these two methods, there is a dot run in systemutil, which is a system utility and it goes to a confirmation with dot run. And that's the reason your outcome for this execution was showing you pass, whereas for invoke application, it was showing you done. So uh, to take care of these things, all you have to do is like understand the architecture behind this. So system utility generally follows the path from here, like all programs, then you go to HP software, uh, HP functional testing, unified functional testing, sample applications, and clicking on the flight GUI. So this is the utility object which is followed by the system util dot run, which is a desktop shell and the menu which is used to access the file and generally it launches. But when it comes to invoke application, it follows the explorer. 
So it goes from the Explorer, right, going to C drive, following to program ADSX, HP, unified functional testing, and then bin folder. Oh, I'm so sorry, not bin. It's a sample application. So samples, flight application, and there is what you find the application. So this is just the difference between the paths which uh, are basically the invoke application and the system util follows. Uh, but system util also comes with an add-on that is dot run, which a method uh, to confirm if the execution really happened and the application was launched on the screen. So which will just verify as well. So for that, you will get some pass or failure as an update in case that application does not launch. We do have certain extra arguments to pass on, but we'll be looking at that in more detail in upcoming tutorials. Now, that's from the desktop application launching. What about when you deal with, uh, <clears throat> deal with uh, adding any kind of uh, web-based application? So for that, you need to uh, you know, just replace the target path here and uh, you include the browser in which you want to launch. For example, iExplorer. That is your uh, .exe. So that executable file path, comma. So it's an inbuilt command, so you really don't have to worry about giving the entire path of it. You can just give it as like iExplorer or iExplorer.exe. All for you have to do is like find out what is the exact name of it. So for that, you can maybe you know go to the uh, the target part of it, and maybe you can find out what exactly is the name of the executable file. So you can find it here, iExplore.exe. So I think I was making a mistake. Good, I saw that. So there is a typo error. So iExplore.exe, followed by that, you can define the application or the URL which you want to open. So I'm using google.com. And close the double quotes. So usually the URLs will be displayed in a hyperlink, but the double quotes are present there. So just click on run and let's see if it really launches into Explorer for us. All right, so as you can see that it has launched and we will just wait for the URL and yes it is, the URL is included as google.com. I'm just not connected to internet, but yes, it is the right thing. It is doing that. Similarly, if you would like to deal with any other browser, all you have to do is define the browser name. For example, let me show you one more, working with Chrome. So chrome.exe, and let's run the same thing. So, as you can see, the Chrome has launched with the google.com as the URL. So all you can define is that. So that's from uh, the understanding on the creation of uh, the commands which can be used for launching an application automatically. So hereafter, when you work with your application and you don't really have to launch your application manually, define this command on the top of the screen if in case your script is involving the execution right from the beginning of the application, then of course the launch can be included there. So you don't have to launch your application anymore yourself. So you can just launch it using the, uh, these commands. And also make sure that you do not use both the commands at the same time because it will create duplicacy and like, you know, copy of the windows. So of course, uh, these copies will create a conflict for UFT to identify the unique object. So make sure that either one of these can be used at any point of time. So that's all from here in this tutorial team. Uh, stay tuned for upcoming tutorials on UFT. We'll be having a lot more things to explore. Of course, to understand them, you need to just subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to get notified. And of course, till then, keep practicing, keep executing, keep learning in case you have any doubts, any cl clarification about the tutorials discussed here, you're free to comment them in the box below. Following that, we'll be looking ahead with new tutorial in the upcoming tutorial. So till then, take care, happy learning.